All right, so on today's edition of Sawdust, we're gonna show you a 300-year-old restoration project. Then we're gonna go over to the modern farmhouse where we do a deep dive into how we insulate on the coast. But first, we're gonna start with framing. I'm Jeff Sweener of Sweener Builders. We have been building on the coast for over 30 years. Our team of craftsmen and design professionals are committed to delivering the best practices in custom home building. Our end product has to be beautiful, highly efficient, and use advanced building science to stand up to harsh coastal conditions. On Sawdust, we bring you behind the scenes to give you an inside look of how we do it. So I think that everybody in, the, in this business started with a stint in framing. I know I did, that's where I learned. I don't get to wear my tool belt much anymore, but I still enjoy it. So as a company, we treat framing just like we treat finished carpentry. You know, we want to take this opportunity to get it right, get it tight, get it square, level, plumb. So come on, let me show you. So framers are really the unsung heroes. Their work gets covered up long after they leave, but yet that's where the quality starts. They build the soul of the house. So we have three framing crews going. Jeremy leads this crew. He's got by far the most experience here. And uh, we just try to preach a philosophy of accuracy and not necessarily speed, but pace. So our, we try to teach that speed comes from repetition, not by going fast. So these guys are stringing the walls, get them straight, and then they're gonna start hanging some floor joists. All right, so we've been here about two weeks now, and we're getting into the second floor here. And uh, we'll have this subfloor done over the next two days, and we'll start the second floor exterior walls. I got Alex and Scott, one on, one on each end here. So this is what we're working with here. This is uh, what we call an eye joist. Um, it is the two members with the uh, vertical plywood glued together, which uh, creates a very durable, high strength joist. Um, it can uh, withstand long spans, heavy loads, and sometimes we use these hangers, slide it in the hanger, fasten it. When the subfloor comes down on this, it creates a uh, very strong, squeak-proof and durable subfloor. Getting started with the 40-footers here. Um, they're being slid off of our forklift across the top. And same routine, one guy on each end here, fastening them. They're a little bit flimsy here. You just need to be real careful not to let them flop around too much while sliding them into place. So as you can see here, um, we, we're covering a lot of ground quickly with these 40 footers. We're about halfway through this building. We're gonna uh, throw about four or five more 40 footers up, a few 16s, and we'll be putting plywood to the subfloor here and uh, 
keep building. We'll have a second floor uh, exterior walls here real soon. Get into the roof over the next couple of weeks here. We take a lot of pride in building a nice, perfect grid of a frame where my uh, peers can come in right behind us and uh, practice their trade um, on a nice, square, true frame. So as you can see, it's in an amazing location. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of the team can uh, make happen on this house. job site on the cliffs at Bonnet Shores. Our homeowners asked for a new build and they requested a sleek modern farmhouse look. So we've combined Azek board and batten siding, Anderson black, casement style A-series windows, and then we touched it off with a bit of standing seam on the shed dormers. I think we delivered. So this is where the Atlantic Ocean meets the bay. And this bay, this bay goes all the way up to Providence and basically divides the state into two halves. So when you're high on a cliff like this, you get a lot of wind-driven rain. So when you have wind pressing against the exterior of a building, you actually created a pressure differential. So the inside has got less pressure than the outside. So it has a tendency to want to suck that air in. If you have a leaky house, that's exactly what's going to happen, is that pressure differential is going to draw that wind-driven rain right inside the building. So we talk about sealing the house up so that that wind-driven rain isn't sucked into the house. So we do that with closed cell insulation. Come on inside, let me show you how that's done. All right, so this is an exterior wall which we filled with a base layer of closed cell spray foam. So it's only a small layer, it's only about an inch. But the idea is this is our vapor barrier. So we have conditioned space on this side of the vapor barrier. On the other side of the vapor barrier is all exterior. So this is the buck stops here. Now, this is rigid, closed cell. It actually adds adhesive to the building. So it's structural qualities about it just as well as the, the uh, air sealing technique. So our theory is we want the house to be tight, a tight sealed container, because that, a tight sealed container, it's easier to condition that space. We're not done yet though, we need more R value. We want to add open cell spray foam on top of this. I'm uh, TJ Kelly, one of the owners of Ecologic Insulation. Uh, we've been doing this since uh, 2007. Uh, originally, we're attracted to the industry um, just just uh, to jump into the the emphasis on, on green building and energy efficient housing. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, lot of, lot of developments that have come around in terms of you know high efficiency windows, uh, different types of HVAC systems, geothermals, mini splits, and uh, you know solar power. Uh, our take on it was while well, all of those new technologies are, are exciting and attractive, uh, we wanted to contribute to the process in a way that would encapsulate all of them. And we saw insulation as the ability of, of to make a more efficient envelope and, and better utilize all those other technologies that are available. Whatever direction you're deciding to go in, uh, we saw insulation as sort of the core to make it all operate more efficient, let's say. So this is the second step of the process. So what we're doing here is installing the open cell foam on top of the base layer of closed cell foam. So that closed cell gives us that initial uh, airtight seal. And then we're just adding our value with this open cell product. The open cell product is a more of a expanding foam material. So he's actually filling each day and you get a little bit of expansion out of that. And then they come back later and actually saw off the excess with this uh, long trimming knife. 
Matthew Helger, um, aka Harry. I've been at Equalogic for seven years. There's two sides to spraying foam. There's the stuff inside of the truck, and then there's the and then there's the art of spraying foam. The stuff inside of the truck is more of a science. It's more of plugging it in, getting the temperatures right. Then there's inside of here. Spraying-wise, it's more to deal with the heat. The heat is uh, is very, very, very hot when you spray foam. Um, yes, you have some really tough jobs when you crawl around in those crawl spaces. You gotta deal with rocks and sticks and all that stuff and and mice and it's really gross sometimes but you know you gotta you gotta want to do it so whether it's new construction or renovation we're always going to try to make this investment at this stage in the game in our insulation we really like the spray foam insulation a particularly close cell up against that exterior for vapor barrier, for added strength. And the other thing we get a lot of comments about is the soundproofing qualities. We get comments that the house is so quiet on the inside. And whether you're on a busy street or a windy environment, a quiet house is a more comfortable house. So all this talk about insulation and super tight houses probably got you wondering, how are we gonna get any fresh air? Well, we're gonna to talk to you about mechanical ventilation on a future episode. All right, see you later. But for now, let's go check in on our project where we're restoring a 317 year old building. So welcome to the Samuel Perry Grist Mill. Talk about a historic preservation. This mill was built in 1703, and it's actually a working mill. Uh, it uses water power to turn a grinding stone and make Johnny Cakes. The land trust uh, acquired the property a couple years ago and is the steward of the property now. We are partnering with one of our clients to, who has graciously donated the materials to re-roof and re-side this building. And Sweener Builders has offered to uh, offer the labor for that in an effort to give back to our community. This is such a historic and significant property to the town of South Kingstown and we're happy to help. Uh, this is a grist mill, it's a 1703, the original structure. It was further up the hill on the mill pond. It was moved in 1825, I think. Uh, what we're gonna do is replace all the shingles on the roof and on the side walls. We're stripping all those shingles now uh, and finding out what's underneath. There's some tar paper, there's some other emendations that have been made over the years as it periodically uh, gets all the wood shingles stripped off and redone. Uh, it's always really interesting to go uh, work on one of these really old buildings. It's a utilitarian structure. No, uh, it, you know, it was a utilitarian structure from the beginning. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it. Um, and I guess that's what kind of makes it cool and distinctive. And we're not going to try and fancy it up in any way. We're just going to put it back together so it looks like what it's always looked like. Mm -hmm. After stripping off all the shingles, we've got these old sheathing boards, which look to be oak, and the post looks to me also to be oak. 
Uh, we screwed back the old planks. It took all the screws almost. There's enough, there's enough material there that we could still screw the lumber back. It's, it's old, it's very dry. The powder post damage is not, uh, is not at all surprising. Um, it's actually, it's, it's not in terrible shape though, given that it was moved. It sits over water a lot of the time. We're gonna start putting it back together. We're gonna have at it again and we'll see where we get. So there you have it, we're underway preserving 317 years worth of history here in Rhode Island. And we're super excited to be a part of it. All right, well that's a wrap. So thanks for watching another episode of Sawdust. If you like what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and every week we'll bring you new content, the latest and greatest building technology, building high-performance houses on the coast. So check us out.